Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Ryan. This is Jake. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Flarek, actually. Uh, not no, a second not. Ryan. As much as I would love it, there are not two Ryans on this podcast. Wait, yes, there are. Our fans have spoken. You two are one individual. That joke is so overplayed at this point. And it we still ha- works. <laughs> this is Ryan. <laughs> There's a third. <laughs> we have just finished day eight of the Kyushu Basho, and it's it's... Just been a god awful Basho, to say the least. <laughs> it's really helping that we're recording this during the Vikings <laughs> underperforming against the Denver Broncos. It's truly the Kyushu Basho of Vikings games this year. <laughs> and yeah. it and is still 20 to 0. Oh, yeah. thank you for thank you, alerting Flaric. us that the score has not changed over halftime. Yeah, so Flair, no who doesn't care about football, is probably going to be continuously updating us on how terrible the Vikings are doing throughout the episode. I and just want to be helpful. That's this all. episode is going to age, I don't know, poorly or very well if we somehow come back in the second half. It'll be interesting. You see, you have to I'm dig- not sure it will be. <laughs> <laughs> that's why That's why I'm committing to this biz, because you have to put the potential there for a good comeback or just really crushing defeat. You just want Ryan to be more sad and me to be <laughs> only slightly less sad than Ryan. Uh, this podcast is the only thing keeping me away from the booze. <laughs> well, too late, because I'm already in by that's, that's true. Mac and Jake are already two whiskeys in. And you've had like three, four drinks in your life. So I don't think this podcast is the only thing. And what you. delicious whiskey it is. <laughs> All right, let, let's let's move on to some uh, something else that's a lot less depressing. Okay, I'll go get the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a correction from our preview episode. I had mentioned that Hokuto Fuji broke Hakuho's pinky finger uh, in his win over you Hakuho wish. on day one of the Aki Basho, that was incorrect. Apparently, Hakuho came into the Basho with a broken pinky, and then Hokuto Fuji beating him just kind of showed him, yeah, no, I probably shouldn't wrestle with a broken finger. <laughs> <laughs> it was just your wishful thinking that kind of like put that on Hokuto Fuji? Yeah, probably. But uh, Sumo Follower on Twitter corrected us, as she is always far more correct than we ever will be. <laughs> Uh, we also did our fantasy draft and prediction series before any Kyujo announcements. And so we have a rule where if somebody is Kyujo before the tournament starts, we're allowed to replace them. And so a couple of people had Kakuryu on their teams. I know Flarek probably had Kakuryu for his U show. Who did you select to replace him, Flarek? Uh, the very healthy and strong Tochi <laughs> Noshin. <laughs> How's that going, guys? Uh, we'll get there. Oh. But it all worked alert. out, right? <laughs> <laughs> not too good. Yeah, not and so good. There. Mac, you also had to replace Kakuryu on your team because you selected him for Junior Show. Is that, that is correct? correct? Who did you have as a replacement? Me, Takayumi. That, that's not not awful. Not awful. It's not good. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Clearly not good. But you know, he's, uh, he's 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 doing okay. Yeah, and I had Kakuryu on my fantasy team, so I replaced him with Daisho. Feeling pretty good about that. He's he got, got you that Kimboshi point. He got Kimboshi, and he's five and three. So. That was a pretty good call by Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Quit jerking yourself off, Ryan. <laughs> I, I Mac, was, this I, is a family podcast. I was about to oh, say, I would make a joke, but don't use shitty language like that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and as a little bonus, kind of at the end of this episode, we typically throw in a little funny something that we happen to record and prep for the episode. So if you never listen past the credits... You probably should. There's usually something fun at the end there. Uh, there was a post on Reddit, like a sumo script, that perfectly encapsulates how every day of sumo goes. And so we've done a dramatic reading of that with the permission of the author off of r slash sumo, which is, I believe, you slash dark knight. Um, wait just a little bit more time as I stall <laughs> to talk about what's going on and maybe it will load by the time I'm finished. Here it is. You slash Dark Knight 109. Yes. So all credit goes to you slash Dark Knight 109. We had nothing to do with the creation of that. We just... Except for the delivery, which is 90% of any joke. That's so. true. It's, it's basically ours now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you, Dark Knight 109. Right. Yes. So we will, and it's Dark Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, not... Get N- it? Yeah, like Get it? Batman. Huh? Huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. You guys are <laughs> awful. Seriously. <laughs> Let's move on to the actual tournament, why people actually listen to this podcast. And obviously the big story of this tournament is the injuries. 
we currently, as of day eight, have seven people that are <laughs> Kyujo and are missing this tournament. So as we suspected during the preview episode, Ichinojo is not healthy enough to participate. He was Kyujo from the very beginning and will be in Jurio in the next Basho. And then kind of like a little surprise, a day one Fusen win for Okino Umi, or no, for Asanoyama, you rarely see that on day one because typically if you're going to be injured, you just don't enter the tournament. You're not on the Torikumi. But Kakuryu re aggravated his back injury that had caused him some issues in the past the morning that the tournament began. And so he was intending to go into the tournament, but he just wasn't able to. And so he has pulled out, and this is going to be his third straight Kyushu Basho that he has missed. Something about November does not agree with his system. Yeah, ever since he won back in 2016, he has not been able to come through for Kyushu. Mm -hmm. We also have Goedo, who damaged his ankle in a day one match against Endo. So he's been out. He didn't win that match against Endo, so he's out the entire tournament. He will be Kadoban for the Hatsu Basho, needing to get a Kachikoshi to remain his at his Ozeki rank. Uh, the worst injury that we have seen. Ugh. This might be the worst injury we've seen at, since we've watched Sumo. Uh, Tomokaze, he oh, absolutely destroyed his knee falling off of the dohyo. He had his leg pretty much hyperextended and then landed with all of his body weight on top of it, and it resulted in a dislocated knee, and that uh, is going to keep him out of action for at least a year, which would probably knock him down to San Danme or uh, Joni Don at that point. Yeah, this is the one that kind of hits me hardest because he was just such a young, like had so much potential. Like he had the whole like Kachi, never getting a Maki Koshi losing tournament mm-hmm. for such a long time until the last tournament. And then and you know, even then it was a seven it was and a eight. hard fought. It was a seven eight in his first time in the joy. So mm-hmm. like exactly. And that's like, barely a Maki Koshi. Yeah. And he had some really, really good matches. I want to say he got Kimbochi at the same time last tournament he has two he had two kimboshis in the last two tournaments yeah mm-hmm. so it's just so sad that that was that happened to him i and i'm just crushed it, it could be the last we see of him in maku uchi with an injury like that we don't know if he'll be able to come back uh strong enough to make it all the way back to the top hopefully he will but if he does that's going to be like two to three years i'm having ura flashbacks ura yeah. tochi notion uh you know it's it's mm-hmm. not unheard of to come back but it's also not unheard of for when your leg falls off to not do sports anymore yeah, yeah. I, I think this injury is more severe than either tochi notion or ura yeah I, I think it's also uh i was gonna say fun to note just because that's the that's like the phrase that my brain goes to but it was not fun to note it was horrifying to note that when he was being taken off in the comically large wheelchair you could already see that his knee oh, was yeah. not in the shape that no. it was supposed to it was yeah. already starting to bruise and there were like like you know it wasn't in the right where, place no no no, no yeah no. the, the knee is supposed to be right yeah mm. your, your leg's supposed to bend about halfway give or take between uh-huh. the ankle and the hip and it did not seem to uh no. so what's the opposite of a shout out because <laughs> I'd like to give the opposite of a shout out to the a shout in yeah, to whatever medical stuff they have at the side of the dojo. It was just a terrible response to somebody who was clearly severely injured. First, they just let him kind of lay there for a little while. And I understand the yeah. ceremony is you go up to the dojo, you bow to your opponent and then you leave. But in a situation like this, where a guy is clearly injured, they're like, it takes a little while for anybody to come to him. And then I think it's Yobi Dashi. It's not any medical oh, yeah, yeah. professionals. No, no, no. And they just grab his hand, try to pull him up onto his feet so that he can walk, which obviously he's clearly not in a state where he can walk. And eventually I think he ends up like leaning on a couple of people to get to the wheelchair and is rolled out. But this is it's just they need to fix that because I just want to compare this to a scenario that happened in the NFL a couple of years ago. Uh, I know a lot about this because it happened to the quarterback of my favorite team, the Minnesota Vikings. The Flair, most important I know. team. They're still down 20 to zero. <laughs> Do not it, tell us. It's still it, halftime. Uh-uh. It, there is a change. Oh, it, there is a change. Just it's, tell me. It's 20 to zero, but no longer halftime. It's 20 to seven. All right. All right. Ooh. See, don't, don't, get, don't give me that. Are looking up. <laughs> That's okay. the team that I want to score points. Yes. <laughs> okay. But, Teddy Bridgewater, just a complete non-contact fluke injury, dislocated his knee during practice one day. I think it ended up in his elbow. (laughs) Not quite that bad. It was very dislocated. But it was bad (laughs) enough, and he got immediate medical attention, 
as should happen in this situation. Eh. But if if he didn't receive that immediate medical attention with what how bad his knee dislocation was, he literally could have had his leg amputated because there was so much internal bleeding in that leg. And just to see like the complete opposite of that with somebody who has a similar injury in sumo and how bad that could end up had it been as severe as like Teddy Bridgewater's, it it's just something needs to change with that, I think. Yeah, and it's just I, I mean, I, I'm not sure what they're supposed to do, but it's just so yeah. agonizing to see the Gyoji and the other wrestler just standing there waiting, uh-huh. like, how rude of you to have your leg explode and not get back on the yeah. dohyo yeah. well, To the defense, uh, the Gyoji and the other guy, it's not the responsibility I know it's, to get. Yeah, the, and, and that's why I say I'm not, I'm not necessarily yeah. saying I know what they're it, supposed to do, but yeah. I know that that looked very yes. heartless and silly. Yeah, yeah, like the fact that they got the wheelchair mostly there. They said, like, oh, we'll give you your chance to hobble over. And do, and yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. not no, something no, that no, 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 want no, no. yeah and i mean even if even if for some reason you think that the proper response is to help this guy back onto his feet you have yeah. four guys sitting cross-legged and one guy who just won a sumo match who are like 400 pound super athletes ready to help a man who is their same size up and, no and they knows. all just stay there and wait for like the skinny little five foot four yogi yeah. dashis to wander over mm-hmm. there and help him into a wheelchair i will say it's I'm trying to give a different perspective. I kind of actually, I think I'm kind of okay with the way it went. Maybe realizing was sphere injury a little bit faster, uh, but like to get someone of his size like up, would you want like huge buff paramedics to get him on a stretcher and carry him out? But there yes. weren't even huge. Yeah. <laughs> well, there yeah, I mean, I would like a lot though. of paramedics to get him <laughs> yeah. onto a stretcher. I want to see. I want freaking firemen over there, man. I want to see something similar to the NFL. Maybe not like at ringside, but kind of in the back. I want a medical team ready to come out with the stretcher in case somebody needs it. Because who knows how much more damage some of these guys are doing trying to walk up to the dojo or trying to walk to the wheelchair, trying to walk to the back, trying to look good. They could be doing more damage to themselves. They need a system where they can have a medical team come in, train to know like, okay, let's not move him. Let's not grab his hand and try to pull him up to his feet. His knee was dislocated, not his hand. Well, yeah, no, but you don't want to pull him up. You don't want to pull him up to his feet and try to make him walk on that. Like one foot. I don't think he was on both feet. <sighs> it, I don't know. Anytime that I'm a hundred, I'm four hundred pounds. I'm really bad at hopping on one foot. <laughs> just you know, <laughs> for my own personal. I reference, think these but. guys are pretty good at hopping. On one foot. <laughs> <laughs> just I said they do I, it I, along I, the straw bales. I think they should have got yes. like the. the I sure they they sure have like got the wheelchair a lot closer, like so he got up and immediately on there. Like the amount of like just kind of waiting and kind of say, "Hey, you can walk over here, right?" Uh, I think that was <laughs> really bad. Yeah, I think, th- and I don't think there might have been some medical people there as he was trying to get on the wheelchair. I'm not sure, but I think mm-hmm. they need to have like a full team of medical professionals prepared to come out and help somebody in case something like this happens. I agree. Uh, let's move on to another very sad injury. Uh, Wakataka Kage, he is our unofficial Yusho champion mm. as he is the only guy to finish the tournament undefeated, losing no matches on the dojo, <laughs> albeit four matches, but he was 4-0 and in those matches. He was Ichi Nojo and Kakuryu also never lost on the, on but, the dojo. Yeah, but they were zero. Oh, I know, four. I know, but still. To counter that, they also did not win. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Wakataka Kage has some wins. He never lost. If we uh, just extract that out to a full 15 days, it's 15-0. Nobody else yeah, can match I mean, that. You can't like infer otherwise. Yeah, exactly. No. So I'm I'm proclaiming Wakataka Kage as the unofficial Yusho winner, but he did injure his ankle. I believe, and it was another fall off the dojo. Mm-hmm. He just yep. landed yeah. wrong on yep. that. Uh, that one not nearly as severe. I think I saw like one month of recovery. So mm-hmm. hopefully he'll be back in Jurio next time to try to get back to he'll the be good for hot division. Too. Yeah. Another thing that sucks about that is that was a that was an awesome match. Oh, absolutely. Um, it was against Terutsu Yoshi, which was the first of two Tiny Man battles on day four, mm. which was both of those were real fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, totally did OK in the match. You know, sucks, you know, that uh, to- Tomokaze, for example, like he actually lost the match, mm. but then mm-hmm. going down off of the Dohyo hurt him. Wakataka Kage wins again. The match itself, pretty good, but unremarkable overall. It's coming off of the dohyo that caused the injury yeah, very clearly. He just landed like in a really strange way. Right. Yeah. So let's move on to another devastating injury. <laughs> Not so much devastating in how severe the injury is, but just devastating to all of our hearts. Personally? Yes. yes. Uh, Tochi Noshin, he got off to a 2-2 two and two start, 
But in his win over Takada Fuji on day four, he had a cartilage tear in his ribs. And so this is keeping him out. Uh, he's already missed enough time that even if he came back, he's already lost the chance to get the 10 wins that he needed for automatic Ozeki repromotion. This was kind of a hard one for me to see. I don't know about you guys, but did it happen at the initial Tachi or did it happen when he pinned Takara Fuji down to the ground? Oh, yeah, it wasn't obvious. No, like, that's just it. I was looking for any indication, and it didn't look like he didn't yelp. He didn't, you know, grow yeah. did, There wasn't anything that indicated that he had done some type of bodily yeah. harm to himself. My guess was during the throw, like he did with Takara Fuji. Uh, yeah, because they, they landed chest to chest. It right. Was, uh, and I, I just went back to check my notes. I didn't even have anything on here other than... You know, Tochi Notion gets a throw on Takara Fuji. Like yeah. I, I didn't have like oh, an and awesome then throw. limps away. Exactly, there yeah, wasn't was anything good. to indicate yeah. that. But it wasn't and then limps away mm-hmm. or lets out a cry or is and then his stays. Chest yeah, or... exactly. Yeah, there was there was kind of a. I kind of watched it again. There was a kind of a slight thing like him holding it, but it was kind of like it's hard to. It wasn't definitely not a look of pain. It was like him just kind of like touching his chest. Like you hey. wouldn't have thought twice about it. If, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's where he had just landed when he pinned Takara Fuji. Mm-hmm. Yeah. L- last thing I have to say on that is. It, it's strange to me that it happened probably when they landed on each other chest to chest. Now, if Tochi Notion had landed on Takara Fuji's quads or on his butt, <laughs> then he would have been killed. Well, yes. Yes. I was going to say, I that's agree. like solid rock. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That'd be landing on granite. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll talk more about Tochi Notion, our thoughts as his time as an Ozeki, as those have come to an end for now <laughs> and probably forever. <laughs> And then just what his future prospects look like on the recap episode. So we will move on uh, to Jake just crying and <laughs> sobbing in a corner. Ryan, learn Japanese and tell me what it says on that wall. It says Takayasu no, Hyujo. It says that's the joke I was about to make. Whatever. <laughs> it, it, it's, it does uh, say Takayasu. I, I flipped over the towel and sharpied on it a different name. Uh, let's see who's winning. Hakuho. It says Hakuho now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah takayasu kind of very surprisingly pulled out minutes before his match with takara fuji on day eight or this morning after he got off to a three and four start it's not a whole lot of info we know about it he did the dohyo iri he showed up but it kind of sounds like it was a back strain or something like that is what i've heard based off of the video that we at least i saw on natasumo's channel which again thank you natasumo um, it looks like he visibly is in pain. So oh, yeah. whatever happened is definitely extreme. He was leaning on one of his um, one of his attendants, manservants. Yes, manservants. I was like, I'm <laughs> yes. gonna get the right word here. His but boy, <laughs> visibly straining and in pain. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that was kind of weird to me because I, I mean, there's there's multiple reports of what hurts, but like leaning on somebody to walk implies lower body mm-hmm. or or maybe back. Is that what we've heard so far? Yeah, yeah, we've heard back and i think somebody else might have said hip or something like that okay so we don't fully know we'll get his like medical card uh once he like completely finishes filing for q joe so this is going to make it very difficult for him to come back in a couple days and maintain his ozeki rank yeah he's gonna need (laughs) so please please (laughs) he is three and five now so if he misses two days and then comes back and runs the table he could still do it so there's still a chance, but probably we are looking at Sekiwake Takayasu in the Hatsu mm-hmm. Basho, like we said, barring a miraculous comeback. And so we'll talk more about that on the recap yeah. episode on yeah. what we think. What do you guys think of uh, how Takayasu looked, this Basho? Tea I loved his tea bag on uh, Tom. That Basho. was <laughs> glorious. <laughs> I was worried Happy we birthday. weren't going to get a chance to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect revenge for ruining his career. Mm, exactly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ruin his career. Yeah, said. Tamawashi injured. Yeah, his I left injured arm. Takayasu. That led to hi- that pretty much led to him now being demoted to Sekiwake. I get that. Ruin his career though. You don't think he can come back at all? A- anyways, I I, I kind of was watching him. Like some days he looked good, some days he definitely looked injured. It definitely yeah. wasn't his usual style of sumo. He, he, I guess he looked. He did better than I thought he was going to do. Like it's, it's when he was able to do a certain Supari style, he did just okay. But mm-hmm. anytime he got like someone on the belt, like he just kind of. Felt there was no strength in his down. left arm, yeah. so I think it was kind of a matter of time. And he tried his best, but it wasn't it wasn't in the cards this time. Yeah, so that is the major story of this Kyushu Basho. Unfortunately, with really no signs of stopping, who knows? <laughs> Takikesho Hakuho, look out! They're coming for all the top ranked guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joe knees. Hi, Joe wife. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the Kyushu's coming tonight. 
<laughs> let's talk a little bit about this U show race, which looks like it's going to be a pretty boring U show race this tournament because uh, Hakuho is the only leader at seven and one, uh, lost to Daesho on day two. Uh, we've kind of seen some sassy Hakuho this tournament mm-hmm. after his match against Takada Fuji on day seven, which I didn't see anything happen in there, but he just kind of like swiped I at Takada that. Fuji's head while Takada Fuji was on the ground. Didn't know what that was all about. I, I think, think it's frustration. I think it was, I, I am the Yokozuna and uh, yeah, you suck. <laughs> well, <laughs> Takada Fuji is in his Ichimon is in, uh, I think they're Isekahama maybe. I'm pretty sure they're in the same Ichimon, though, and I saw on Twitter that like uh, Hakuho usually treats those guys a little bit better than he treats the people outside of his Ichimon, so it was kind of surprising to see that aggression towards Takara Fuji. I, I took it definitely as kind of a friendly aggression, and uh, the fact that he's in the... Uh the fact that they're in the same Ichimon, if that's actually correct, it makes a lot of sense then. Yeah. He's just like, ah, I got one on you. They're, they're buddies, but not like brothers. You he know? was they're not his like sword the bearer in one of his Doyo Eries when Ishiura couldn't Ooh, do That's a good that's point. True. I forgot yeah. about that. Before uh, Hakuho had the tiny boy uh, Doyo Eri going Sweet on. Sweet baby Enho. Yeah. Uh, but we also saw Hakuho has zero patience for Mata's as Tamawashi <laughs> went early <laughs> in their day eight match and Hakuho forcefully shoved him backwards to put him back in his place. Yeah. And then once the match happened, quickly disposed of Tamawashi. So Hakuho is your sole leader at seven and one. He's looking pretty good and it's going to be tough for anybody to take him. I don't think so. I think we are seeing signs of injury and aging with Hakuho. Yes, We've he's been still seeing on the, the top. those for like three years. Well, yeah. But I think as, as this Kyujo Kyushu that is currently going on, I think it could happen here. I think that Hakuho will probably get to eight or better, Ooh. but since he is literally knocking on that door right now, I think he's going to pull out by the end of this. I think some injury is going to happen, and he's going to pull out, and then it's going to be anybody's usual after that. The only loss he has, though, is to Daesho, who is apparently really good. Yeah, he's no. been he's been hanging around the zone of death for quite a while. He's, he's kind of been that fringe elite guy for a little while. But mm-hmm. yeah, that, I mean, depending on how this Basho turns out, that loss doesn't really look all that bad. Uh, but I, I kind of disagree. I think losing to one guy who's just totally on fire for whatever reason or other, I, I, I think that his uh, Hakuho Sumo has not looked... Uh, I mean, it, it hasn't looked... Um, in his 100% elite greatest of all time form, but it still looks better than anybody else that mm-hmm. that we've seen in this Basho. Oh, I would agree with that. I don't know. I'm a little concerned about Mac saying that Hakuho is just going to get one more. It really sounds like Mac's getting very specific on this and that Mac is threatening Hakuho with bodily harm. Oh, no. He knows the, he knows the script for the Basho. <laughs> hey, we were in Japan. You heard me what I said in Japan. <laughs> I like, don't care. He bought, do the, he bought the Kyushu 2019 script. <laughs> <laughs> Mac has been on the phone with the writers trying to make that prediction series win come through for him. Seriously, B, <laughs> B has been great in the field. He and I have been talking. <laughs> B has some ins, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's, yeah, I, I def, uh, just no, Ryan, the, let's not move on. No. <laughs> yeah, j- it's uh, just to follow up on Jake's point. I think he has been looking good enough, probably better than anyone else, but he definitely doesn't look at. I feel like he's definitely better against the people he's been facing. I, but he doesn't look so much better that once he gets some stronger competition, that it's going to be he has an advantage. I think. Well, it's gonna if be any of them much, are still in the tournament, yeah. What stronger competition? Uh, <laughs> He's I, already beaten most of the Komosubi. Yeah, Ta- who's left? <laughs> Takakesho throws up there. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no Ozeki. Uh, Matakiumi still technically is a lead. So he has like a. Takiyumi does have like some eye thing going. Yeah, it's, it might be looking. Good. Yeah, I, what I guess what what I'm getting at is he he looks better than everyone else, but on this what. Better than everyone else, but on the same order of magnitude. He doesn't yeah. seem to look ascendant where like all of right. his matches are just toying with people the way it sometimes the does. The slap, they fall exactly, down, yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. So let's get to some of that everybody else. The two guys that are one back of Hakuho, we have Asanoyama. And playing the role of surprise Yusho contender for the Kyushu Basho nope. is Kagayaki this time. They are nah. both at 6-2. and two. <laughs> Hey, I nah. knew it. I had faith. I had faith in Asanoyama from the beginning. No, no, no. Oh, I thought you were gonna... talking about Kagayaki. I right thought now. you were claiming that, like, oh, no, no. <laughs> I saw this coming from Kagayaki oh, the hell whole time. No, 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 no. Okay. No, because that's BS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we we're all in agreement that Kagayaki's not going to win, right? Correct. Uh, okay, he good. won't win another match. <laughs> <laughs> and Asanoyama and Hakuho have already faced off with Hakuho already beating Asanoyama, mm-hmm. so it's not like there's a chance for Asanoyama to even something between mm-hmm. those two. He's got to hope somebody else beats Hakuho 
while Asanoyama wins the rest of yeah. his matches. My my quick thoughts on Asanoyama is like I've been really surprised on the way he's been looking. He definitely is kind of separating himself from all the other young ones. Uh, uh, maybe we'll see if he keeps that up to get to the Takakesha level. But he's definitely looking really good. It kind of almost reminds me of a young Kisuno Sato. Mm. Counterpoint: Asanoyama is trash, and don't take him from us, <laughs> sumo gods. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, entreat the sumo Okay, oh, good We should not <laughs> talk up anyone right now. Uh, we we got to take the voodoo route here and make yes. sure that not we, to praise him too highly. We talked up Tomokaze. We saw what happened to him. Asanoyama is middling Maegashira at best. Yeah. <laughs> six and two. That's only seven matches away from six and nine. Yeah, yeah, it's not really point. all that great. Good point right there. <laughs> yeah, so he's absolutely trash, but the way he's winning <laughs> and the way he looks. But if he wasn't trash. But if he wasn't. If he trash, wasn't hypothetically, let's talk about how good he could be <laughs> <laughs> exactly well i i've just been liking the guy i yeah. i've been mm. watching him i have very high hopes for him but too bad he's trash <laughs> yeah as the sumo gods have slowly been eliminating all the other up-and-comers he, yeah he's he's one of my favorite up-and-comers <laughs> uh and then we have nine rikshi that are two back at five and three uh one of those guys being takakesho what do you guys think about takakesho so far coming off of that partial torn bite or peck I think he's he's been looking pretty good in general. But then again, let me read you on day one. I said that Takayasu, Tochi Notion, and Takakesho look okay. <laughs> <laughs> not the uh, not the best group there, Jake. So take that with a Tarutsu Yoshi size grain of salt, if you will. <laughs> but I don't know. Overall, he's he's looked good when he can get that pushing and thrusting going. It, it's clear that he is you know at the at, at the Ozeki level here, but it's. I don't know. Three three losses already is kind of kind of the troubling. new Ozeki level. Correct. <laughs> yes. What currently counts as Ozeki level. No, but his match today was good. He kept himself square. He had his feet under him. Uh, was it Mese? Yeah, yep. Mese. Mese just could not get a grip on him. Couldn't get to his Mawashi. Was totally off balance. And Takakesho just pushed him out of the ring. So it was good to see. I like that with Takakesho. It's also his pretty much only way of doing sumo. <laughs> We also have Daisho's at five and three. We talked about him a little bit. Uh, Tsudu Gisho is at five and three. Who? Huh? I only bring him up. It is his second tournament in the <laughs> Makuuchi division. I only bring him up because my wife saw his match against Sho Hozon. I believe it was on day one where he got the ever loving piss slapped out of him <laughs> by Sho Hozon. <laughs> And she felt like Sudo Gisho just always looks like he's about to cry. And so he has become one of my <laughs> wife's sad, new favorites. <laughs> there we go. And so I'm going to keep an eye on Sudo Gisho for my wife that from now fantastic. on. That sounds fantastic. Uh, speaking of Shil Hozan, he's been looking pretty good, I thought. He's was, been looking angry. Yeah. He's very angry. Rage. There's there nothing but rage. At least two matches, like the one you said against Suri Gisho and the one against Enho. I was like, oh, this is also fantastic. Where he sumo. tried to like split Enho in half. Yeah. <laughs> I think Enho was trying to split Enho in half. <laughs> Yeah, at that point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Shohozan, uh, he won the hometown showdown versus Kodo Shogiku. Nice. Uh, he had a little bit of cheeky timing, I think, on the Tachi Eye. Mm. Um, I mean, by all means, he was able to get an advantage by doing you know anything he can within the rules. By, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it was a little cheeky. But he, he did end that one with a big throw, and uh, that's probably the loudest pop I've heard so far this tournament because mm-hmm. those two guys are both from the, the city here mm-hmm. where this uh, tournament's taking place. I will say when I think of Dai, uh, not Dai Eisho, Shohozan, uh, I definitely think Cheeky, so that's kind of right in character. Yeah. <laughs> and like 24-inch pythons like Hulk Hogan because that guy <laughs> lifts. <laughs> and Mac, we have another guy at 5-3 and three we want to talk about a little bit. My baby boy. My not big- Enho. No, not not Enho. My actual personal baby boy, Chiyomaru. <laughs> Personally, Max, my child. My, my child. physical son. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> he also adopted uh, Chiyomaru while in Japan. <laughs> I adopted you while we were in Louisiana, Flerick. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's been many adoptions amongst the group. That's not important. Indeed, yes. But no, Chiyomaru's doing great. Looking great for that Kachikoshi. I love it. And we also need to talk about Mitake Yumi. He's got an Ozeki run hanging in the balance as we speak. He is currently hanging like hanging from yeah. a noose or something. Jesus, like yeah. what the hanging hell is going on? Eyebrow. This is kind of like Kagiyaki level. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, God damn. Why, ouch. How can somebody be like so good at their peak and so like middling almost all the time? 
Oh, endo? You talking about endo? <laughs> I can be talking about more than one. We guy. can be talking about say, a hang lot on there. of guys. That's an open question. <laughs> uh, but Mitake Yumi, he started off two and one, but in that day three win he had over Mese, he got a cut over his right eye as him and Mese banged heads pretty good at the Tachi eye. He's lost three straight matches after that and really didn't look like the Mitake Yumi we know, which kind of made some people wonder if possible concussion happened along with that cut over his right eye. Uh, he finally looked more like himself in a day eight win over Aoyama. And at this point, he is four and four. Hopefully, he's kind of fought through the fu- the fuzziness that a concussion causes. We can talk more about how fighting through a concussion, if he had one, yeah. not a good Allegedly. idea. No, oh. it's it's not. Um, but how do we think Mitake Yumi is going to finish out this tournament? I'm I'm kind of hoping that it was... Uh, specific to that match because yeah, the, it, the losses that he's had, the the Daesho loss, kind of like we were talking about earlier, that one doesn't look terrible. Uh, his other losses are Hokuto Fuji four and four, Okinoumi two and six, and Takura Fuji four and four. Okay, not not great. Mm-mm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping that are he snaps that, out of it. Are you talking about their head to head matchups between these? Oh guys? no, that's that's the record where no, everybody's no, at record. day eight. Oh, so, okay. Daesho at five and three, that loss doesn't look terrible on Mataki Yumi's record. Mm-hmm. But the other three guys are all even or in Okinomi's case, bad. Okay. So it, I mean the the losses that are on Mataki Yumi's current Basho record are are not great. I'm I'm worried about him quite a bit. Uh the two losses he's had since that or excuse me, the two wins he's had since that loss streak of three are Kodoyuki and Aoyama, both at four and four, so that mm-hmm. doesn't really tell me a ton. Mm. Uh, but yeah, what did he need to get for Ozeki? Was it 11 to get to it, the third? that's, that's gone at this yeah. point. We, we were guessing probably like 12 to get it this yeah. time. I, I mean, if he won out and he looked phenomenal doing it, that might be one thing. And it might be something where he could make the case that he was just kind of buzzed off Concussed. of that one. I think, yeah, prob- <laughs> I think he can possibly, probably possibly keep it alive if he gets to nine. Oh yeah. yeah. Count oh, yeah. this one as like yeah, another yeah, yeah, middle. Yeah. 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 I, I, I would totally agree there. I, I don't think that. Have a phenomenal hot two and then get the promotion. Yeah, even with all the these top guys out to help maybe inflate his record a little bit, even if he were to win out and look great doing it, it would still be, you know, he'd still be at 11 and four and did not have a great showing in several of those matches. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think it's pretty much dead that he's getting Ozeki this time. Yeah. But depending on how serious that was injury related that he's recovered from. Yeah, I, I think it's very realistic to still think that he could keep the run alive with a you know nine, maybe even ten wins. Yeah, I think that's his best hope. Try to keep it alive, uh, or just get a kachikoshi. Let's talk about the storylines going on, Jurio and below. Can I make one quick point? Sure. I ragged on Mese, thinking he was going to get utterly annihilated mm-hmm. at this uh, rank that's way higher than he's ever been. He's doing okay. Yeah. He's four and four. Yeah. Uh, I think he, he started a little hot and then has, has dipped in the last couple of days, but I take it back. I shouldn't <laughs> yeah. have crapped on him quite so much. Yeah. I will also like to just bring up Enhill because on, is there, there is gesturing like going on, which is confusing me. <laughs> uh, like, like, just I feel like, script. I feel like the, uh, the bus driver should uh, do a little bit better job with that. Oh, fine. I'll just <laughs> say it out loud. Jake, go to the Bonske. I need to look up Ura's record. There sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, with Enho, I, I wanted to. There was I was watching live on day three, and there was Murray commentating uh, in English. And one thing he said, it's like apparently uh, uh, Mia Neo. I I am terrible with names, but he's kind of like the '90s Enho, who's now a kind of the commentator for the sumo uh, sumo matches in Japanese. And he said he's been kind of watching Enho, and he actually gave him some advice, kind of saying like, "Hey, you should." change up your style where like because like the way you do sumo now is kind of really bad for your elbows kind of mm-hmm. said you're gonna get injured and that very match like he had this really good grip with like his left hand, arm and like he was trying to throw someone but he just didn't have the strength so he was kind of just getting like just a lot of pressure on his arm mm-hmm. and the, the big thing i want my big takeaway from that was like i am worried for enho's elbows right now <laughs> i'm worried for his entire <laughs> body at this point yeah yeah, so. I'm, I'm very worried about his groin area after that match against Shohozan, where he did the full split. It was a very slow, I guess. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. how slow <laughs> it is, Flarek. Yeah. Somebody could do that to me and take an entire, like, 24 hours to do it, and it would still annihilate me. <laughs> when you lose a match because the first thing that touches the ground is your taint, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But the these bottom are... of the Mawashi has hit the clay. Ooh. But but the one thing Kuchinage. about... <laughs> <laughs> but the, Yeah, but the one thing about Sumatori is, like, 
they are surprisingly flexible. Like, or I won't be surprised if like that's what he does on the regular. <laughs> yeah, he's probably fine. But for yeah. somebody like me, that just looks it's like still hurt. Ow, ow, yeah. ow, 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 still ow, hurt ow. to watch. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to bring up was his match against uh, Yutakiyama today. Oh yeah, mm. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was, no, no. I made many notes about that. That was so good because you talk. I think he was, was it four, good. Yeah, it was fantastic because he was four. Uh, you're talking about I think it's four and zero against Enho going into the match, and he just showed a clinic on how to beat him, which is just like play reactively and just keep him away from your belt, and you're just win. Okay, uh, so you're no, ignoring no, 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 the no, 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 no. theatrics that happened before the actual match. Claire, what that, happened with that <laughs> match was akin to our first D and D session where both of our Rixi stood straight up at yeah. the Tachi eye. Oh yeah. Oh, the one where he, he stood up, and then the Gyoji says like, "Oh wait a second, that wasn't a Tachi eye." <laughs> come on, come on, dudes! And then yeah, come on, made dudes. him do it again. And then he did it again. And, and then, then he, he did it like, again. And then the ref's like, "Okay, yeah. enough, go." Yeah, that's that's within the rules. Like you know, it the ref is, is but being it's dumb. hilarious. Yeah, it, <laughs> I agree. Just, it's very funny. The visible rage on that Gyoji's face that was palpable, man. That, that was that pretty was good. Palpable <laughs> emotion. He did like as soon as it happened the second time, he was like, uh, "Hakuoi, uh, <laughs> do something, <laughs> get together, just do the sumo." Yeah, but I I just love it as it was just a clinic on how to be no. And like, if people were, if other Rikshu was smart, they would just cal- copy that s- style and get free wins. Every Everybody time. stands up. You yeah. heard it here first. Flaret calls Rikshu dumb. All right, let's <laughs> move on. Some, some of them, yes. <laughs> very strong, but sometimes very dumb. Let's move on to Jurio. Our co-leaders at this point at 7-1, and one, we have Ikioi looking for his second straight Jurio Yusho, Yusho and Kizakiyumi, who I believe is kind of newer to the Jurio rank. Straight can look that up for me. Actually, uh, no, I don't think we can. No, I cannot. The <laughs> Sumo database is now down. The fifth member of the podcast letting us down again. Yep. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, for all of us, I think Hosh- Hoshoryu has been looking pretty good in this Basho. Mm. His first as a Sekitori, he is five and three, and he's put on uh, some pretty good matches. Uh, I've actually been able to watch a bit more Jurio because there's a Reddit user that has been posting all of the daily Jurio matches for this tournament. And so check out Mount Fuji on YouTube. It's spelled M T Fuji. On YouTube, if you want to see all the Jurio matches from every day, how's Horshore you been looking? He's five and three. How? But how has he been looking? When he he's went? been how looking pretty good. Looking? Oh, he's been looking it. good. He's he's throwing people left and right. He got a, a leg trip on one of the days that was, you know, probably not something that's going to fly against Soto, Mike Ishira. Soto mm-hmm. Kage? Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get better at the Kimura. <laughs> yeah, the thing with the leg, and then the guy fall down, go boom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If something happens to Hoshoryu, I'm going to be so probably so heartbroken. Hoshoryu's trash. We hate him. Yeah, he's so bad. At <laughs> Leave him alone, Sumo Zero, God. He's Sumo not gods. worth your efforts. He's awful. <laughs> he's not worth your efforts, Sumo Gods. So just a quick rundown of some of our other favorites, how they're doing the lower divisions. Naya is at 2-2. Two and two. Tera no Fuji is at 4-0. and oh. Ryoku, Ryuko is at 3-1. and one. Roga is at 3-1. and one. Waki Ichiro, unfortunately, is 1-3. and three. Come on, buddy. And Ura at the bottom of 4-0. and oh. Well, at the bottom of Jonidon is 4-0. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Details. Details. Uh, and there are some newer guys kind of rocketing up the Bonske that I have my eye on to see how they're doing. So we have a guy, Tochi Kamiyama. He is currently 2-2 two and two at Makushita 37. This is his fifth career Basho, and he's 18 years he's old. He's a young Nice. So if he can continue getting up the Bonske this quickly, that's very impressive for him. Uh, we have Toki Sakai. He is 3-1. and one. He's in Makushita in his fourth Basho. He's 23 years old, so like a guy that went to university. Uh, but a guy that I'm very excited about, Moto Bayashi, he is 4 and 0. Oh. He's in Sundanme. It is his third Basho and he is undefeated. He has an 18 and 0 oh. career record. He had 7 and 0 Yusho in Jonokuchi and then a 7 and 0 oh Yusho in Joni Don in his first two Bashos. Oh man. So, I'm I just kind of keeping an eye out on these young hot risers. Yeah. Isn't it kind of like 21 the breaking point of where not too many people go undefeated after that? Yeah, it seems like the 21 and 0 oh winning uh, Jono Kuchi, Joni Don, and San Don May, and then somebody loses pretty quick after yeah, that. Yeah, that's when you got to Makushita and gets a, kind to of To be fair, harder. Makushita is a gigantic field. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not it's not a gigantic field, really. San Don May and Joni Don are both much larger than Makushita. It's just a lot Skill level. harder. Skill yes. level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last guy that went 21-0 was Enho, who is currently up in the Makuuchi division. So, nice. so doing okay, you think? Uh, doing pretty decent. Yeah. <laughs> But with that, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get our first ever update on where the GSB belt is, and then we'll just do some other stuff that we typically do. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, Flair. Do you want to know what the, <gasps> how it's going right Fine. now? Fine. Okay. It's uh, 23. Yeah. And 13. Oh, hey. 
Things are looking up. Things are coming around. If we uh, if we make this next segment it, long it, enough, it, we might it, actually. It is the fourth quarter. I hope we don't make this next segment. It's, long it's the fourth quarter. <laughs> Still looking for that perfect gift for that special sumo fan? Look no further than Sumo on Tape's newest collection of audiobooks, The Lord of the Dohyos. This classic story tells of the Enho of Power, forged by the Dark Lord Hakuho in the fires of Mount Doom, and the brave Endo the Hobbit, tasked with its destruction. I will do it. I will carry the Enho into Mordor. This special edition features professional voice actors playing all of your favorite characters, like Asanoyama. Then you have my belt. Abi. And you have my limbs. And Takara Fuji. And my ass. Follow them on their epic journey to save Middle-earth and overcome great odds and dastardly enemies. What is it, process? Guido, Guido. Live through the struggles of the Enho bearer on his quest. The Enho. It is a heavy burden. Uh, I'm right here, guys. It speaks to me, Samo Naomi. But they endure under the guidance of the wise old, very, very old wizard, Amenishki. Is it secret? Is it safe? Yeah, I'm still here. It calls out to its master. Uh, Hakuho, can you come get me? Go now to sumoontape.com and enter promotional code Grand Sumo Breakdown to receive the Sumo Rillion as a bonus. Sumo on Tape, order now. Hakuho, uh, they took my phone. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Hot digging. <laughs> okay then, <laughs> Jake. Why don't you help <laughs> update us we on the We broke Ryan. GSB we broke belt. him. <laughs> so the GSB belt. <laughs> uh, this is a title that we have started this Ba show, and we're going to follow it until it gets to the very tippy top. But on the very first match of the Ba show, we decided that is for the inaugural GSB inaugural inaugural. inaugural. There it is. <laughs> inaugural GSB title. That was Jonokuchi 28 West, Yutakanami, versus Jonokuchi 29 East, Okuniasi. You didn't Oku- give it to Hattori Zakura? Uh, excuse me. Let me take a third swing at this name. Okuni Asahi. There <laughs> what, we go. What about Hattori Zakura? He wasn't in the first match. <gasps> he doesn't get the belt. But, but, he wouldn't have gotten it anyways. Our little wayward samurai. <laughs> yeah, he's he's hasn't lost him. Hasn't won a match hasn't yet. Won a match. <laughs> or Mac. This but, is just a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's 0-4. But I like our little samurai. Go away. No. Anyways, uh, so on day one, Yutakanami beat Okuni Asahi. Nailed it on my second first <laughs> ever GSB champion. First ever GSB champion, Yutakanami. He defended it once on day four against Asahi Maru, and then he lost it on day five against Otsuji, Jonokuchi 25 East, who has since defended it once. So we have watched our GSB belt travel from Jonokuchi 28 West up to Jonokuchi 25 East. <laughs> <laughs> making our way to the top, it's boys. Not a lot of progress so far. Ascending. However, on day nine, it's possible that o- Otsuji could pass it about 10 ranks up. That match Ooh. has already been announced. So we'll see where that goes by the end of the Basho. And again, this is something we're just following a linear title. You beat the guy who's got the belt, then you get it. You know, passing it all the way up until it gets to Yokozuna. Should take somewhere around a year to two years. Yep. Let's move on. For an update on how we are doing in our prediction series, and I think it's very well, right? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I've got a point, and Flarek's pretty happy. He's got a point that he earned during the bonus episode for Kise no Sato. Yep. And Mac is sitting at negative one, but yeah, it so still somehow looks like Flarek's probably going <laughs> to lose. <laughs> is not looking very good for me for some reason. For I, some reason, I, I, like Tochi Notion uh, Yusho, that's like a lock, right? Uh, You'd think so. Uh, <laughs> pretty much Tomokasi Kimboshi, right? Uh, yeah. Not for a few years. <laughs> okay. This might be a little rough then. Yeah. I've at least got Hakuho for the U show, so I'm hoping I won't be shut out. That's probably going to be worth a point, maybe half a point. Yeah, and I've, I've got a point for Daesho Kinboshi. I've got a couple other ones that look like they should be pretty good, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty decent. And uh, for a refresher, what do we have to do this time? Uh, we will have to eat some hot sauce or take shots of hot sauce. Every once in a while, I think we'll determine like every 10 minutes or something like that. And it, it's not going to be good. It's going to hurt. Unless it's Mac, who we're probably just going to shoot with a Nerf gun because his, of his weak esophagus. No, no. I found a, I found a nice hot salsa that actually his would weak, I can maintain. flaccid esophagus. I think, I think you should bring in that salsa so that we can test it to make sure okay. it lives up I, to the hotness standards. As you wish, I can do that. That's going to be... Really, really crappy <laughs> for whoever loses and has to try podcasting. In that same vein, yes. Eric and I have been 
putting our heads together for something uh, a little more dastardly. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, yes, indeed. Flair, Do tell? have you done your homework? I have not. You have not done your homework. <laughs> That's all you right. You fool. You so, put your trust in Flaric. So Mac has been doing some stuff. I have done dastardly. my homework. <laughs> Oh dear! What is it? What does this mean? Oh, it means I think you and I are, have to put a prediction point on the line. Oh, uh, but you do. Good. This is a special quiz since both of you are so knowledgeable in all things that are sumo. Oh, I've totally Welcome got this to the doyo quiz. <laughs> all right. Oh dear. You have five questions to answer. Get them all correct, or at least better than your opponent, and you get a point. If you suck, you lose a point. The rules are simple. Uh, quick point of order. Uh, Broncos 23, Vikings 20. Yeah, baby. Ooh, okay. We're gaining. All right. Are you ready? I guess. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is what it must feel like, Flarek, when you surprise somebody with a quiz. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a little unnerving. <laughs> uh, first, so wait, is it just whoever answers first? Oh, no. There's multiple choice. Okay. Good. Your first question. How long does it take to build a dojo? Is it three and a half days, three days, two and a half days, or four days? <laughs> three days. Four days. I shall note the records down. Oh, so we're not going to know until the very end. Oh, no. Okay. This is going to be super easy to follow along with. <laughs> <laughs> Mac is quite dastardly Oh, evil. You, you had to know this was coming. What is 17,128 times 153? Is it 663,661? <laughs> 663,662? Just let him read the question. <laughs> Sorry, Thanks, Ryan. Wait, how did you know that was question <laughs> six? <laughs> All right. Which tournament allows fans to take pieces of the doyo home once the basho is over? Is it Kyushu, Natsu, Nagoya, or Hatsu? Kyushu. I'm also going to go with Kyushu. All right. For our listeners, you can find this answer out. At some undetermined amount of time from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, indeed, all of this is available on Wikipedia. All so right, go all have right, fun. Right, right, right. Grumble. Next question. Known as Janome, the sand outside the Tawara is used as a tell-all to the Gyoji and the Shimpan on who stepped out first. What does Janome mean? Is it the snake's eyes, the falcon's gaze, the hawk's sight, or the god's view? God's view. It's the snake one. I know this one. I would also like to answer the snake one. <laughs> <Too late. laughs> I'm pretty positive that Ja means snake. Yeah, I didn't hear Kami in there. I don't know why I went with that. I, I, I don't know why either, but okay. That's why I let you answer that one first. <laughs> A fourth question. Before each tournament, the Tate Gyoji will bless the ring and place items into the center of the doyo before being covered up. Which of these is not placed into the doyo? Is it seaweed, salt, cherry blossoms, or squid? Those all sound totally reasonable. Things I'm going to go with salt. Squid. This is going to end up one nothing in favor of for, <laughs> for the snake, snake one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and your final question. You should all. You should both know this. Oh, the good, colored tassels represent the four sacred directions and the four seasons. What are the four directions? <laughs> <laughs> what are these four colors? <laughs> Black, green, red, white. That. Is it A, <laughs> blue, green, white, and black? B, white, green, red, and black? C, white, blue, green, and brown? Or D, blue, green, red, and brown? The one without blue. The one that I said that was correct before you listed <laughs> them off. <laughs> so you are going with B, white, green, red, black? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, both of you. No, well, Jake yeah, said yeah, yeah. the brown one. No, I said the one without blue. Because <laughs> I know there's not a blue one. All right. So both of you went with B. All right, so we're going to plug these answers into the supercomputer <laughs> doop, doop, and find doop, out that doop, I doop. get a point for the snake one. Yeah. Right? The correct answers. Yeah, why don't you read the questions again with the uh, correct answers? Okay. How long does it take to build a doyo? The correct answer is three days. Booyah! Dang it. Suck it, snake boy. <laughs> <laughs> Two, which tournament allows for fans to take pieces of the doyo home once the basho is over? The answer is C, Nagoya. Ah. Uh, oh, well, we, we both answered the same yeah, one. Yeah, on we that both one. took Yeah, you, you, you both did the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Three, what does Janome mean? It does mean the snake's eye. Yeah. Uh, we're tied. Yeah, novice level Japanese flashcards. <laughs> yeah, good call, because uh, May means eye as well. 
That's also right. Yeah. yeah. Before each tournament, what does the Gyoji not put into the it ring? Probably out. the deciding it question comes down here. To this one. No, it doesn't. You were both wrong. Ah! It's, it's cherry blossoms. Yeah. Okay. That is not put into the ring. It was a, that was a good red herring there. Indeed it was. <laughs> he should have put a red herring as one of the options. A red herring? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the colored tassels. Which of those is correct? The correct order is blue, green, white, and black. Get owned. I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive there's a red one. Nope. Yeah, because is it yeah. like hanging above the dojo? Hanging above the dojo. All right, we're going to research this in the meantime, yeah. but... Uh, so that means that we tied. You both suck. So we get zero. Flarek, we, this is where I was counting on you. So ah. Flarek, ask us your trivia question. Indeed. My trivia question. <laughs> uh, who's the? Uh, uh, give me a second on this one. <laughs> I call shenanigans. No, it's it's, it's red. Azure, me, Viridian, black, and white. Let me pull up my uh, potential Those are the fun four. facts page on my one note. That's what's on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. Here's another picture. Well, okay. son of a bitch. So, I mean, we're still tied. You're we're still just high. more correct than you thought Dang we were. It. it was and a trick question. you look like a dumbass. Well, that's <laughs> not very hard. <laughs> we got him. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Flaric just doing research for the time. You said you had this, Flaric. <laughs> let's just cut this out and go to the lightning round. There we go. Let's, yeah, let's stick on to the lightning round. And then Flaric will, will do the tiebreaker after that. Uh, sure, if sure. you if you come up with one, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So while Flarek does research to find his tiebreaker question, we're going to move so on old. to the lightning round. And so we'll start with Mac on this one as he tries to recover from <laughs> being proved wrong that the four colors are red, white, black, and green, and not blue, white, black, and green. There's Viridian in there and Azure. Azure is Azure totally means blue. Right. That's weird. Well, Wikipedia is wrong. Somebody should update that. <laughs> Sorry, Mac. <laughs> Showing off the information I had. <laughs> so, Mac, who has impressed you the most so far? Uh, definitely Koto Yuki. I had pegged him for Maki Koshi. Still, <laughs> not, well, hey, he's still impressive at this point. I thought he'd be sucking it up like crazy by day eight, but he's actually been holding his own. It's been impressive to see. I still don't think he's going to get uh, Kachi Koshi, but it's he's actually put up some pretty good matches. All right, Jake, how about you? Um. I would say the injury bug has overperformed pretty substantially. Fusen show is seven and one. No, I, I got to say, uh, may say basically because I gave him so much crap at the beginning and he has held his own and the matches that he's lost, he hasn't necessarily, I, w- I was kind of expecting him to be like two and six at this point And those six being like brutal one-sided losses. He's done. Okay. Flarek, how about you? Uh, I have a question. I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Who has impressed you the most so far? Oh, ah, uh, it's a, uh, it's a very interesting. It's Asin Asinoyama has to be. Yeah, I I'm with Flarek there. Asinoyama. I mean, you could say Hakuho, but that's just where's yeah. the fun in that? Yeah. He, <laughs> I, I expect it from him. Actually, where's the fun in any of this, Basho? Yeah, true. <laughs> All right, in a very very deep field, Jake. Who has disappointed you the most so far? In a very very deep field. Um, let's see. I have so many to choose from. Uh, come back to me. All right. Flarek, who has disappointed you the most? Ah, uh, good. Uh, oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Multitasking is so terrible. All right, fine. Uh, Mitaki Yumi. I was the only one that was ready for that. Mitaki Yumi, I think he, he should have done better than, you know, a, a 500 record at this point. It's just silly. Mac? What? I already did. Who's impressed me? Yeah, who's disappointed you? Oh, who's disappointed me? We've moved on, damn it. <laughs> no, I am st- I'm waiting for Jake to click doyo, and then I can say where it was from. To, to look oh, at his, no, his I mean. podcast is falling apart, right? No! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, disappointed me would be Kodo Waco. together. <laughs> Kodo Waco, actually. Um, Point of order, though, we are on Wikipedia looking at a picture that shows red, green, black, and white. But scroll down. Yeah, but the picture scroll was right down there, to what? Th- right there. Azure Dragon, Vermilion Bird. Azure Dragon, Blue. also known as... Blue green dragon, Thank green you. dragon, or blue dragon. <laughs> that doesn't help anyone. Exactly. So, what color is vermilion then? Vermilion, I think that means red, right? Well, don't why don't you click know. on it click and on we'll it find, and find out. out together live on the podcast? Well, no, vermilion, the word, I think means red. Yeah. So, let's figure it out. So, it's red. So, yeah. Flarek, while we're figuring this out, who is disappointed me the most? What? <laughs> uh, who's disappointed me the most? Uh, it's, uh, 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 why is it Mac? <laughs> 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 That's normal. That's normal. Uh, Ishiura, I guess. I, I, I got to go with Jake, who said Mitaki Yumi. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. And Mac, did you say who disappointed you the most? Yeah, Kotoweko. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. Let's let's move on. And what's been your favorite match of the Basho so far? Flarek. Oh, okay. I th- have one for those because I have something. <laughs> I have stuff bold. And it's okay. That was pretty fucking good. Okay, you got that one was good. So the one that I think was the best so far <laughs> was Takayasu giving the old tea bag to Tamawashi. The match itself was not like the lackluster. I, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but I wouldn't say it was also the most exciting thing I've ever seen. But revenge for Nagoya was was ever so sweet and sweaty and probably smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Flerk, I am gonna go with the uh, Shohozan versus Endo one, uh, where like he get forced. Oh, where he gave him the splits, yeah. yeah. I, that was a fantastic match. For me, Mese and Takayasu, before he was injured. Oh, I had that one on my short list, too. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Um, I haven't really been overly impressed by any of these matches. Uh, I feel like there were a handful of, of matches in Jurio Day 7 that were better than any of the matches I've seen in Makuuchi so far. So I'm going to go with one of those. That is my official <laughs> answer. <laughs> Which one? One of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what is our most exciting potential matchup for the upcoming days? I'll, I'll start off, I guess, Takakesho Hakuho, just to see if Takakesho can do anything. I mean, we've already seen Asanoyama Hakuho, and everybody else is gone, so there's not a whole lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say Shima no Umi versus Kageyaki, uh, because these two guys... Yeah, I can't even pretend. Like, oh my God. <laughs> no, uh, for me, I think... Just for, um, you know, just for like I- I- emotional reason- reasons, uh, Mitakeyumi Takakesho is going to be pretty fun just because it's a rematch of the playoff. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah. I, I just want to see some more Asanoyama. And I'll probably want to see him because uh, he already went against Hakuho, so against Takakesho will be the one I would like to see. For uh, me, he also already beat Takakesho. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just falling apart here. <laughs> One of those other guys, because you want to see Asanoyama, yeah? Yeah, Yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for me, Mitaki Yumi Hakuho, because I want to see, that'll be the clincher for if he has a great Basho and still manages to beat Hakuho, I think that could be a deciding factor on whether or not he becomes an Ozeki, either this tournament or the next one. Uh, Any win over Hakuho carries a lot of favor. That's true. And because we are contractually obligated to ask this every Basho, let's try to keep it to one word answer apiece. Who's going to win it? Jake? Hakuho. Clark? Hakuho. Asanoyama. Hakuho. All right. I, I'm not going to fault you on that, Matt. Thank you. It could happen. <laughs> All right, Flarek. Have you come up with a tiebreaker question? I have. Okay. Is it just first to respond correctly gets it? It's, uh, sure. I guess I'll kind of <laughs> go with that. You can, I uh, know, correctly gets it. If it ties, it's going to be a tie. Okay. So everyone gets kind of a chance to say it. Sure. So there's a saying kind of in uh, Japanese martial arts, also with sumo, called Shingi Tai. Uh, what does it mean? Heart, technique, body. I don't think this is fair because Jake <laughs> far, <laughs> by far knows more Japanese than me. I literally am planning to get that phrase tattooed on me protest (laughs) i think we're gonna give it to jake right there i am (laughs) just so grateful to have the chance to to compete against me let's do it again sometime flair can you find more japanese vocabulary that is (laughs) novice level but not that hard (laughs) uh yes uh one second uh a moi wa moi shinderu uh, ooh, ooh, I know this one. <laughs> you don't know you're already dead. I win! <laughs> the you don't know part is not part of that phrase. You're already dead, though. Uh, I feel like yeah, I corrected him right. and I should get a point for uh, that. So. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> another another fantasy point. Another no! negative one to write. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think... No, keep it at minus let's, one. Plus let's one. put this podcast to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> let's euthanize this idea. one. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend anybody rate this podcast. So let's move on <laughs> to the next one. <laughs> Flarek, how about social media things? Oh, yeah, we got, we got that stuff. You can find us, <laughs> you can find us on social media, Grand Sumo Breakdown. GrandSumoBreakdown.wordpress.com is our blog for fantasy and power rankings and junk. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or criticisms, because I'm a dumbass and can't read, That's uh, hold off drop us a line at GrandSumoBreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. All right, so make sure you stay tuned for after our ending credits to listen to our dramatic reading of the Dark Knights. What was it, 109? Uh, don't sell it up too much. His, his script. <laughs> and also, uh, Jake, turn on the Vikings game. We're driving down by three. Okay, let's do it. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grand Sumo Highlights. I'm your host, the man who gets a little too excited about the matches, and with me, as always, is my partner, the man who hasn't quite figured out how to pronounce Japanese yet. Konnichiwa! We've got an exciting day coming up, so let's get right into the action. We begin with an injury announcement as one of the Yokozuna has withdrawn due to breaking a nail in yesterday's match. He has released a statement saying that he wants to focus on his recovery so he can return next Basho and fight in top form. That's unfortunate for sure. Certainly has nothing to do with the fact that he's lost two matches in a row. Certainly not. Let's go to the first match. Two completely unremarkable low-ranked Magashira that you've never heard of before this tournament and will never see again after today. Yeah, they're getting lined up and here and it's over. Since absolutely nothing interesting happened in that bout, but we need to kill some airtime, we will now sit here in awkward silence while the entire match is replayed in super slow-mo. Quite a match, wouldn't you say? I have literally already forgotten everything about it. Next up, one of the big men is on the clay, one of the largest rickshi in the tournament. This wrestler is a full 50 centimeters taller and more than double the weight of his opponent. How do you think he's going to use his considerable size and strength advantage in this match? Most likely by moving straight backwards and attempting a slapdown. Right you are, and there he goes. We'll give him a few seconds to extract himself from the third row of the audience. I really thought that would work out for him this time. Moving on, we have another match underway, and this time we've got an obviously blown call by the Gyoji. I'm going to hesitantly reference a mono e, letting the tone of my voice imply that I know the call was wrong, despite my unwillingness to say it out loud. Well, no, mono e appears to be forthcoming, and we are terrified of losing our broadcasting rights by being in any way critical of the officials, so I'm going to start explaining why that call was exactly correct, even as slow motion video replay currently playing on screen completely contradicts everything I am saying. I just want to let our viewers at home know that the producer has definitely not burst into the broadcasting booth and is most assuredly not threatening us with a gun. Do not send help. We are doing just fine. The judging is fine. Everything is fine. Up next, it's about between two lifelong rank and filers that randomly turns into the best match of the day. I'm going to continue talking even as the match starts so that the idiots watching this on a live stream who weren't paying attention between the matches suddenly have to scramble to find the right tab on their browser when they hear the Gyoji start screaming. This match has everything. Back and forth action. A few close calls on both sides. And it all ends with an incredible Kimurite that you've never even called before. Unfortunately, we were expecting this match to be terrible and so have allotted no time for any replays. Next match. Here we have the random mid-ranked Maegashira who is somehow tied for the lead in the Yusha race facing off against the old veteran who you could have sworn retired last year. And it's another impressive win for the Yusho leader. Let's have a close-up of his fellow co-leader who is sitting ringside trying his best not to scowl. We have our interviewer standing by to talk to the winner. As usual, he's going to make sure to hold the microphone too close to the Rikshi's face so that his answers are nicely overlaid with heavy panting. You've been having an excellent tournament so far. What are you doing to help you succeed? I've been trying my best and trying to do my brand of sumo. By that way, I've always wanted to ask this. Why are you breathing so heavily when you're matched? It lasted three seconds and ended over two minutes ago. Well, I think it's just my focus on my brand of sumo. We'll see how it goes from here. That doesn't answer my question. I, I'm sorry. I don't actually know how to give an answer that doesn't reference my brand of sumo. It, it's my brand of sumo. Back to you in the booth. Stepping up to the dohyo now is the Kadoban Ozeki. It's been a tough tournament for him, and his injury situation certainly isn't helping. He's given it his all, but that torn shoulder muscle, dislocated knee, and two broken legs are definitely slowing him down. Also, after yesterday's match, he had to get his right arm amputated at the elbow. So we'll see how that affects his sumo going forward. He's definitely going to have to knuckle down and find some of that fighting spirit. His sumo has been very disappointing so far. Not what we would expect from an Ozeki, to say the least. And here we go. Well, that was fast. Absolutely no resistance put up by the Ozeki there. He's got to be stronger. And it looks like there may be another injury to add to his woes. The Rikshi appears to be holding his head in his hands, and it has to be a bit concerning to his fans that it's no longer attached to his body. Unwelcome news for sure. Everyone will be watching carefully to see if he switches up his fighting style in light of this decapitation. He is insisting on leaving the dojo under his own power, though, so that's encouraging. Also a bit unsettling. And that's it for today's matches. Stay tuned for our analysis of the disciplinary actions taken against one of the junior Rikshi for daring to actually have a personality. Goodbye. Say yo, Nara.